This is San Miguel de Allende. It was easy to fall in love with, with its enchanting colonial architecture painted in paprika red and turmeric yellow. Bougainvillea spilling over walls of courtyards and iron gates. But what's behind the city's beautiful facade? Here are the five things we did to have a deep experience in this touristy city. Number one, we set the intention before arrival. When traveling to a place where life is different from what we're used to, there can be a tendency to judge. We wanted to prime ourselves to show respect for the local customs, to seek to understand. We come as humble guests and we're thankful to feel welcome during our visit. Number two, we talked with locals. The first thing we do when we get into town is drop our bags off so we can head right back out and wander around. Eager to practice my Spanish, I greet anyone who makes eye contact with me. Making every excuse to interact resulted in conversations that reminded me of what I love most about travel. I enjoy seeing things that pique my curiosity. Sitting in silence in the presence of an awesome landscape and good food as much as any other tourist. But when I can have a conversation with a local, to see my destination through their eyes, to hear the pride in their voice as they tell me about their city and its people. Those are the moments when I walk away with a smile. Number three, we followed our senses. So one morning, I'm heading down to the town square with Elio on my back. It's an ideal place for him to play. We turn into one of the streets that leads up to the square and something hooks my nose. A bakery. I step through the blue doors and I see racks of pastries. Shoppers are holding a tray in one hand and tongs in the other as they shuffled along the flower dusted floor. The empanadas catch my eye. They were still warm. Real talk, I contemplate eating every single one of them while I let Elio chase the pigeons. We love being where things are happening, but sometimes a perfect day is when the sounds of cars are replaced by the wind blowing through the trees, when the square edges of the buildings are replaced by the prickly arms of giant cacti, and narrow sidewalks are replaced by wide open fields. One of our favorite places to get away was a botanical garden that boasted rare cacti and a nice view of the city. It was only a mile away from our apartment, but we felt like we traveled a world away. Nature has a way of doing that, doesn't it? Number four, we took our time. Before our transition into this lifestyle, we were always in a rush. We woke up already feeling behind. We finished showering not remembering if we washed all the right places. We said goodbyes without breaking our stride toward the door. And the rest of the day was as much of a blur. These days, we're taking our time. We've slowed down enough to take pleasure in the simplest of things. This must be how our two-year-old sees the world. I hope we can hold on to the sense of wonder. I hope that each time we step out of our front door, we continue to see the world around us as a potential adventure. Our travels in the past were limited to short vacations with tight schedules. They could feel like just as much work as the jobs we left behind. Now, we spend at least a month in each place. This is enough time to get to know the aisles of the grocery store. Find the best coffee. I'm just going to take my time to savor this. Oh, and maybe even make some friends. All right, last one, number five, we experienced life with locals. It's already dark outside, but we can easily spot our final destination before heading home. The size of the food cart is doubled by the cloud of grease splatter and steam. As we wait for our order, we chat with a guy named Enrique. The cook hands Annalisa our burger. It's a double patty with everything on it. Then Enrique says, you are now Mexican. Wait, what? 
You ate cowhead tacos and now you're eating a Mexican hamburger. Food. We look forward to it everywhere we travel. Sometimes it's just mediocre, but most of the time, the flavors make me involuntarily throw my head back. During the first two weeks, we ate at Safe Bets. However, a foodie's experience of a place is incomplete without eating what the locals eat. So the following week, we bellied up to as many street food stands as our pants would allow. It was time to take some risks, to test our stomach's fortitude against mystery meats, unfamiliar condiments, and exotic flavors. Would it be worth it? After 16 local joints that serve tamales, tacos, quesadillas, gorditas, empanadas, soups, and tortas with all sorts of tasty fillings, we ended up with three happy bellies. I had eight tacos and at least half of that burger. And now I'm winded because we went up the hill and I got fat. When we're not eating out, we cook simple meals at home. And instead of walking the aisles of a mega grocery store, we went to our favorite local market. Our favorite meat vendor was also on the same street. And for the first week, we couldn't get enough of chorizo sausage. It was delicious without needing any other spices. But after a while, we started thinking about how unhealthy it was to eat it on the regular. So we began preparing more vegetarian dishes and saving meat for the times that we went out to eat. Looking back. Now that we've settled into our next destination, I think back on our time in San Miguel de Allende. At first, I see the colorful streets and the parroquia watching over the city. But pretty quickly, my mind shifts to the memories of us chatting with locals while eating a simple lunch at the market. Avelio picking guavas with his friend in our courtyard. My conversation with a 70-year-old local while sitting on opposite sides of a park bench. Our Airbnb host mom teaching me how to make refried beans of her treating Elia with as much kindness as her own grandson and of sharing stories with new friends. I think that over time, our memories of San Miguel de Allende's beauty will fade. But my hope is that I'll always remember the feelings of connection in the faces of the people who created depth and gave meaning to our month in San Miguel. I wanna thank them for welcoming us into their city and for welcoming us into their homes. This video is for them. <laughs>